touched on my camera there has been some issue with the camera so this session would be without seeing my face so no issues <laughs> yeah so basically uh, yeah i think uh, uh, dr devya did a great job in introducing myself uh, so yeah so uh, now that you have overview of what i have done uh, i wanted to discuss about uh, things that have not been mentioned uh, so my research interest started in data science since uh, maybe my second year or th- second year of first year in college uh, we i started with uh, working with uh, drdo ministry of urban affairs and other projects wherein we research mostly on computer vision uh, including surveillance so the surveillance included mass surveillance like intrusion detections loitering detections we have published papers in uh, ieee uh, wherein we uh, aimed at uh, improving the automation in mass surveillance wherever it was required so post that i you know after completing my btech i work, i'm working as a data scientist in pharmacy so here uh, it is mostly uh, revolving around customers and their data and uh, aiming at uh, improvising customer experience through the data that we get uh, as regards today's topic i'll be first talking about advancements and uh, uh, core uh, belief of ai and computer vision and uh, once we have uh, understood what computer vision is and how ai is being used in computer vision i'll also be talking about how ai has uh, aspects of helping in uh, mathematical modeling and equation derivations so to start the session so this is a ppt that i've downloaded from university of bristol which i think is intuitive so to just to give an overview if if we think of image what do we think right so when we think of an image a human thinks uh of various pictures that have been uh, uh, there in our mind since time immemorial for starting from our childhood age adolescent age mountains waterfalls buildings uh, parents all of these images are stored in our mind right now how are they stored now uh, that is a different aspect of uh, a uh, discussion there are a lot of methods by which uh, memories get stored and that is a way of conscience now how do we replicate it into computers we have been uh, we have been uh, successful till now in creating algorithms we have been uh, successful in computing uh, much faster than human uh, capabilities uh, through our uh, uh, algorithms uh, your processing unit and microcontrollers now uh the thing that we lacked at least uh, till last 30 to 40 years is uh, intelligence right so when we talk about intelligence humans have three to four type of intelligence we know uh, uh we know what we see we know what we hear we know what we talk and we know what we touch so all of these are a form of intelligence and then there is supreme general intelligence that is our mind right so the mind controls all of these our sense our hearing our smelling everything right so when we study about computer vision we aim at studying how a digital image or video might be looked at by a computer and how does a computer draw meaningful derivation or insights from an image now when we look at our image a human would look at like this the left side image right we may look at a house a two story house there two buildings right we will just look at what uh, what color it is what are the edges and all now how does the computer look at it for computer it is just numbers for us it is a, a smooth quantized image for computer it is just a, a matrix of uh, numbers like uh, if the dimension of uh, let us say the height and width is 128 and 128 so then it will be 128 into 128 into 1 this thing, because it's a grayscale image for color images it will be 128 into 128 into 3 this is the dimension of the matrix so for computer vision or for computer it is just a matrix of numbers right now the the three number that i mentioned third dimensions are blue green and red so all colors can be formed through this bgr combination that is why color images are of uh, uh, n into n into 3 and grayscale images are of n into n into 1 channels right so for as i mentioned computer just knows that this is a bunch of numbers it doesn't know that this is an image we are processing it through code and we are seeing it as a image by quantizing it 
but number the computer only stores it in form of binary or whatever format you think of right so how do you uh, help computer draw uh, insights from it now there are various operations in mathematics that we have learned which will help us doing so now uh, so when i say mathematics which aspect of mathematics mostly geometry uh, so we know that uh, by looking at uh, uh, let us say a figure we can say whether it is a line a rectangle triangle circle w what is the feature right but how would you tell uh, how would you tell about a figure even without looking at it if i just give you the radius of it or if i just give you the uh, uh, dimensions of it you can also guess right whether if what is the eccentricity of the figure uh, is it a hyperbola is it a parabola uh, what are the coefficients so every figure has a equation every geometrical figure has a equation so through no through simple equations also we can understand or derive an image right so that is the same way that happens through com uh, for computers the computers can also do operations on these images like they can uh, do a convolution operation they can uh, do a filtering operation filtering operations in the sense they can just find out the uh, depth of the numbers like if you see here uh, the values that are less will be more dark right 12 14 19 these are less dark and the values that are high will be more gray so that is how uh, computers can draw a Uh, difference as to what is the difference between this uh, background of the image and this foreground of the image, right? So numbers can be uh, used uh, to give meaningful insights to computers. Now, having said that, what are the applications of this uh, computer vision? As you can see, uh, it has varied applications in uh, object detection, uh, facial recognition, uh, fingerprint scanning. uh, uh self driving vehicles uh, then 3d uh, uh, 3d reconstruction uh, mris uh, disease detection and all other aspects so computer vision has broadly been used in uh, uh, every sector starting from healthcare to fmcg in automating the pipelines uh, in uh, applications to filter content and classify images so it has been used in every aspect of uh industries starting from digital to healthcare uh to fmcg and all other aspects that i mentioned so whatever we are seeing here those are the early uh, uh early stage or you i could say the uh, uh, last 20 to 30 years whatever whatever we have progressed through our graphical processing units through the advanced hardware that we have got now through this gpu that we have give, uh, got we have been able to produce this machine learning and deep learning algorithms who have been able to accurately detect classify and localize images right uh today we would like to talk about uh, uh so i think uh, most of you might be aware ab about uh, this uh, algorithms like uh, cnn right convolutional neural networks uh, object detection frameworks and others so i will not delve into those research as i think there has been a, a significant progress in that area uh, at least in last 7 uh, to 8 years we have had uh, state of the art uh, cnns and object detections and rnn networks uh, i today i would like to talk about uh, research from of named dale2 so dale2 uh, is by open ai open ai is this firm which researches uh, which is independently researches on uh mostly uh, nlp and computer vision now what is dale2 dale2 is a, a new ai system that can create realistic images and art from a description in natural language so what does it mean so how do you so if you uh, assume we are kids so if someone asks us to draw a mountain so we conceive something in our mind right if you ask a kid to draw a mountain the kid will conceive something from on his mind where will he convince, uh, conceive from from the memory right whatever he has seen in his earlier past how, how do mountains look he will uh, try to draw similar picture right similarly we can teach ai to create images from text we will not draw anything we will not take a single stroke here we will just give text description and this dali2 model will generate images by itself and this generation of images is completely realistic 
and near to uh, natural right so if you see here they have given a text description an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style and this is the image that has generated and dalit generates multiple images for a text it is not just single images that it produces so if you see here it is closely related to the text that we have given we have we have asked for a astronaut who is riding a horse in a photorealistic style now this can't be hard coded right you will not find a image where an astronaut rides an uh, horse in a photorealistic style we can change the uh, semantics in the text we can just change the photorealistic style to uh, andy warhol style now you see the astronaut and riding a horse remain constant the background of the uh, object changes now we want to make it a pencil drawing so you see how accurately the model is able to depict whatever we have wanted to in our text uh, uh, text data right now if we want to go to teddy bears see now teddy bears mixing sparking chemicals as mad scientist now it knows so how does this generation happen so it has been trained on millions of images and text which have been ground truth data right so basically you have images and you have the captions so uh, both these are trained together and created uh, and then a latent space of uh, image and text vector is created that is how it knows how a teddy bear looks it knows how an astronaut looks it knows whatever it has been trained and it has been trained on a variety of images unlike a cnn wherein you would just classify a dog versus a cat right it is not fine tuned for something it is a generalistic model so teddy bears mixing sparkle chemicals as mad scientist as a 1990s saturday morning cartoon so this is a cartoon if you want to change it as digital art so it retains the context of the object but it very cleverly changes the background or theme in a step monk style so there are teddy bears they are mad scientists but the style is theme. so it has learned association of scenarios what is a step monk style how does a cartoon look what is a digital art what is an object this teddy bear is an object this is an activity mad scientist pickling uh, mixing sparkling chemicals as mad scientist this is an activity it has learned every aspect like a child would do right see teddy bears shopping for groceries now th these two scenarios the early scenario and this scenario is completely out of relevant right there is no way one could hard code this scenarios it, it the only way we could uh, teach them is through training right so uh, we are asking for teddy bears shopping for grocery in the style of yukio and this is yukio style and if is if you can see the multiple images that they generate and they are they look completely natural right one cannot imagine that this is generated by a uh, computer see as a one line drawing so it also understands how to place the objects how to create the activity and how to create the theme of the object where to place it uh, what kind of uh, uh, colors to use so it knows it through its training extensive training so in this model they around, they have around 1 billion parameters as they claim so they have trained in such a way that it retains all the aspect of the image in cnn or object detection what will happen a cnn will tell you this is a uh, picture of teddy bear Uh, an object detection model will just create a rounding box here, and it will tell you that uh, this is a bear and this is a bear. Two uh, uh, two rounding boxes will be created at max. But this generative model has understood the context of what the object is. It is teddy bear. Has understood what they are doing it. They are doing a AI research, and where are they doing it? Right. So this seems like the new era of computer vision. it would be very fascinating to see how this uh, kind of research uh, helps uh, google facebook and all other platforms and then eventually it helps general public to uh, automate their process it will have new avenues in the industry of entertainment graphic designing uh, just imagine you could just narrate a story tomorrow you could just narrate a story uh, a king was there in the woods and then the queen came uh, or maybe i am fighting in fierce uh, battle 
along with a sword in one hand and maybe uh, i don't know a gun in other and it could create a visualistic scenario with your face if you have trained it on your face so that is the kind of impact that this models can create tomorrow if you want if you want to say i want to have a different ending for game of thrones you can just edit the last few scenes you can just give a text that this is how the i want the ending and can create a video for you that is the power of this model right now we can see apart from creating uh, generating images from text what else can it do palette do can make realistic edits to existing images from a natural language capture it can add and remove elements while taking shadows reflection and texture into account what does that mean this is an image right normal image let us assume you want to add a flamingo here where do you want to add let us say you want to add it here so you see the flamingo is added here now if you if you want to shift it to this pool it got shifted automatically now you want the flamingo to be there right outside the uh, window so now it is standing so you see in pool a flamingo can st can't stand right so now they have created a, it has created a uh, rubber uh, rub, rubber uh, flamingo right outside the uh, window it has created one which is standing right so now let us assume th this is a hall and you want to place a sofa here so when you want to place a sofa here what does it generate it generate different type of sofa that it has seen so all this have come from the training that it has seen in training it might have seen a sofa that looks like this so it has generated itself that might look you know if you show this if you show this research to a person let us say you uh, hypothetically you go back in time and you show it to a person in 90s or 80s it is no way that they will believe you they will say this is hoax but this is the reality of today if let us say if you want to place a corgi that is a uh, kind of animal you want to place it somewhere in this scenario so i want i want to in, uh, i want to convey to you how it attains its regional competition it is not like someone is creating this dog image and just pasting it here like a uh, uh, paint uh, copy and paste it is able to retain its uh, spatial uh, variants here so if here if you see here the colors are different here the texture is different the style is different the uh, the corgi here looks similar to the person's texture when you shift it here it again blends with the local uh, textures and local space when you bring out it becomes real so it knows how a photo looks how a crayon cartoon looks and how a realistic dog looks and that is the magic of this dalit right and it can so it can do a lot of things wherein you can just give a image and it can create variants from you as to whatever it has seen so if you give this image it has created all these variants so you see these images are starkly similar to the original one and uh, are in real uh, i mean uh, the, these are not copied ones they have not copied from any internet or maybe some uh, ip rights they, they have the model has created it so there is no issue of ip rights right so you see it it uh, it has learned uh, aggressively to create a space such that it retains the overall uh, uh, theme at the same time it creates its local objects in a way that it blends with the original theme so this embedding learning uh, this diffusion model that I, that it has used is a great leap in computer vision and that is how it has been able to uh, you know break through all other models and um, have has created a place on its own so to explain how this model works uh, do, does anyone want me to explain how the model works uh, uh girish i'm sorry like the participants are muted so yeah. maybe they can raise their hands I think yeah. most of them wants to. Uh, I think they can chat in the channel, or is it disabled too? Uh, like for few, it is disabled. Uh, if you could see the reactions, they said like they want you to explain. 
Okay, okay. So, okay. So the students are or the members are sitting in one place, is it? Uh, no, they are diversified. Like they are distributed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, I would uh, love an interaction with the students. Okay. In, then instead fine. Of, yeah. uh, fine, fine. Okay. One second. Yeah. I'll just unmute them. Uh, yeah. One second. Okay. So the participants are unmuted. Uh, please, uh, you can tell your response here. Yeah, so uh, the members, do you want me to explain how the model works or should we move ahead? Does anyone of you have any questions in all that I've explained here? How the model works or what, any details that you would want to know? Come on, I think everyone is young here in energy and mind. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we'll move ahead. So basically, I'll just give you a brief overview of how this uh, model works. It'll seem, a, it'll seem very technical and, you know, bookish type if I go into the mathematics of it, but I'll just explain it in layman's term. Uh, so basically, what it does is, so when the model was created, it is an amalgam of uh, two architectures. So first architecture, the task is to understand the relation between a text and the image, right? So it has been trained. So in training, what happens? We give the image and we give the caption. We give the caption like this, like Teddy Bears working on new AI research underwater in 1996. So it creates a vector, feature vector for this uh, text and the image. And once it uh, creates this blending of text and image feature, it tries to compare them. It learns them that, okay, this image is of a teddy bear. Okay, and with teddy bear, there is a computer also, right? And they're working. So, so it has got, while training, it has got a, a, a text feature vector and the image feature vector. And it has learned to compute the distance between them. It can be any distance, cosine distance, Euclidean distance, and other distances. It has learned to understand what is the difference between a, a teddy bear, uh, a computer, a activity of swimming, or activity of wa walking. It has learned everything. And this architecture is called CLIP, Contrastic Language Image Pre-Training Model. So this CLIP architecture is also made by OpenAI only. So what does OpenAI, what does that model do? The model finds out the relation between a text and an image in simple terms. It learns to associate uh, uh, a given image to a text. So if you just, so you do, that model doesn't require any pre training. It is like a zero shot uh, network. T tomorrow, if you want, just want to classify between tomato and brinzel, give the image and uh, just give a uh, two uh, uh, text like tomato and brinzel and uh, try to create the uh, cosine distance or Euclidean distance. You will find that it accurately uh, classifies the image it has, uh, whether it is a tomato or a brinzel, even without training. Uh, with respect to, and it will be slightly less accurate than this uh, trained CNN network, but that would, uh, this trained CNN network would re require at least, let us say, 10,000 or more images and uh, training cost, optimizing cost, and a lot of things. So th this zero sort classification is like a kid who has seen the world, uh, who has understanding of what everything looks like. And if you give new things to the kid, it will do the task itself, right? So we have, so throughout this journey of AI, we have tried to, you know, uh, uh, implement or discover things, invent things in such a way that it resembles, AI resembles human behavior. So that is the same thing here. So once it has understood the uh, uh, relation of text with image, there is another model, which is like a Rubik's Cube solver. Now, uh, all of you might know what is a Rubik's Cube, right? It is just a cube with six or six colors, six or nine colors. Uh, you can just shuffle it and you can solve it, right? Now, if if I if I if I get a Rubik's cube and I shuffle it completely and I give it to a per, uh, person to solve it, can you solve it or not? Even if all the pixel, all the uh, colors are uh, disassembled, there is a rule to solve it, right? Uh, we have to follow some rules. We have to uh, 
turn the faces, the right, left, and all the things you have to do. And then no matter what form the cube is, there is an algorithm that you have to follow and you'll, you will ultimately be able to solve it and all colors will be together, right, in the Rubik's cube. Similarly, there is a model which if you just, if you take this image and if you pixelate it, if you, let us say you shuffle it, think of it as a Rubik's cube. Uh, think, divide this image into 1,000 into 1,000 uh, squares. So if you shuffle this uh, 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 pixels and then ask the model to uh, rearrange it, it can do it so. Because it has been trained like that. If the One image is taken. So this, this I'm talking about a diffusion model. Diffusion model basically learns to fine tune the pixels. Even if the uh, pixels are uh, shuffled here and there, this steady's hand is that side. This head is, uh, this head is, here is this side. It will learn to uh, rearrange the pixels in such a way that it makes sense. So this training is done. So what happens, uh, so how, uh, so using this clip and uh, diffusion model, how is this DALI created? Now, uh, uh, so now your task is to create a image given a text. So what does clip do? Once a text is given, it generates pixels. Now, clip cannot create meaningful images like this. Okay, this is a meaningful image, right? Clip cannot create. Uh, I'll show you. See, this is how a diffusion model works that I explained. It solves slowly the cubic cube, and then it comes to the form, right? No matter how it is. So clip basically is like a block. So clip will, so the clip model will give you the output like this. It will not arrange the teddy bear and the computer uh, and give it as a, a, a image for you. Humans will not be able to understand it. So given a uh, text, what will clip do? Clip will give you a uh, pixels. Let us say pixels. Now you have to, this diffusion model has to rearrange these pixels in such a way that humans can see it. So both of these models work together to create a image given a text. You can read about uh, DALI2 more in their website. This is openai.com. Uh, this, uh, this is completely their research. I do not have any contribution. I just wanted to uh, introduce you to this project because it is exciting. So yeah, that is about DALI2. Uh, and these are the advancements in computer vision that we are seeing today. There was a time we were only working on uh, convolutional neural networks, ANN, RNN. Slowly, we shifted to GANs, transformer models. And I think next five to 10 years would be a space wherein we would be able to provide general intelligence to AI. So this is a general intelligence, right? It has a capability to do tasks. It is not fine-tuned to do uh, work like a robot, like just classify between dog and cat. It can do n number of things, like a human, right? So these uh, contributions will lead us to general AI in future, wherein uh, AI would be able to think like a, a human. It would be able to have conscience. It would be able to generate data on its own like human do. We get thoughts, right? We do not know where we get the thoughts from. It is an amalgam of, again, memories. The same way the AI can do it uh, themselves. I cannot assign gender to the AI now, but yes. Uh, so the, this is about the advancements in computer vision. Uh, so till now, uh, so I think for computer vision, uh, this is uh, the end of uh, topic. I'll next step to mathematical modeling with AI. So before moving to mathematical modeling, does anyone have any questions regarding the computer vision or anything that I've explained here? You can raise your hand, you can unmute. We have 207, we have 300 attendees. Uh, yeah, for participants, like uh, Girish gave you a very good explanation and so much uh, interesting things. So please feel free to ask him any queries or anything if you wish to ask.
Okay. I don't think anyone has any question. So the next session is a interactive one. Uh, I just I thought uh, since all of you will be research scholars or students, we could do it together. Do, do, does everyone here uh, have a laptop with you? Do, are you sitting with a laptop or uh, are you accessing it through your phone? Uh, so a few of them has, sir. Like at least 100 should have. Yeah. yeah. OK. OK, but I'm, I hope someone speaks up. But because uh, I, so I think I was cl uh, uh, clearly audible. Uh, if there is an issue in uh, my no, audio, no. it's also clear. No, no, me. that's perfectly all right. Everything was fine at your end. Uh, like I'm not sure if you're not able to see the reactions people send. They're actually giving you smileys like uh, thumbs up and everything. OK, OK, oh, so I was not able to see that. Yeah, oh, since you're in presentation mode, fine. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll next proceed towards uh, equations or mathematics. This might, uh, this will also seem pretty boring. That is why I will make it a little interesting for you. Starting with a very basic thing. Uh, here, uh, I would need uh, interaction with all the fellow members because it is not a one way street. I am not the, uh, I mean, I'm not in a space where I would just come give a lecture and go away. I would love to interact with you. So uh, now we have seen, till now we have seen how computer vision, AI, and image aspect, image analytics has done contributions, right? Uh, Made be automation, 3D ma uh, mapping, uh, drone surveillance, mass surveillance, or facial recognition. This, these are the contribution of image analytics and image data science. Now, uh, what, what can be the contribution of uh, uh, AI or machine learning or deep learning in mathematics or statistical modeling? or equation modeling, whatever you name it, right? So I'll give an example of how we can uh, use it, use AI to create equations, to find out uh, uh, parameters, values, whatever we want, using the, just the data that we have. So let us take a simple equation. Does anyone identify this equation? Just does anyone uh, uh, know what this equation is? Y and X. Do you are you do you recall what this values are? Thirty two and one point eight. One point eight is uh, nine nine by five. Nine by five X plus thirty two. Does anyone remember this equation? School in your school days. The conversion we are using that. Uh, in temperature Sorry? conversion, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are we converting? We are converting Celsius degree to degree in Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. right? Fahrenheit, yes, sir. Yeah, so, so the, y is degree F or degree Fahrenheit. X is degree Celsius, right? Now, imagine in a class, let us assume you are in sixth standard or fourth standard, whenever this equation is taught. You know that F and C are related. Uh, but you forgot, you didn't, uh, for, so this nine, 9 by 5 and 32, these are just y-intercept and uh, uh, beta coefficients. So uh, now we co call them so. In your early stages, you wouldn't know that. You just know that there is some term associated with x, and then there is an independent term called 32, right? So think that you do not know the values. You do not know this 1.8 and 32. You are thinking, you are confused whether it is 1.8 or uh, uh, 2 or 3 or 1.7 or 1.6, you do not know. Now, how do you find out? But you but you have a data. What do you have? You have this chart given in your exam, exam examination hall. You have Fahrenheit, you have Celsius. Fahrenheit is your y, Celsius is your x. Given these values, can you find out the parameters? x coefficient and y intercept? What is the equation? y equal to mx plus c, right? So how would you compute the slope? How would you compute the slope? Anyone? I2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1, sir. Yes, great. And, uh, yeah. And uh, how would you uh, find out the y intercept? Given the, uh, given the uh, slope, you can directly substitute that. 
for you would just need two values or one values and then you can just find out the y intercept you can find it from a graph also what will be your y intercept y intercept will be your distance of from origin to the point where it met the y axis 32 right and what will be your slope slope will be y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 32 by 17.78 yeah so minus m no so that is why you will get minus 1.8 so 1.8 uh, is your value right now it was a single linear equation with one variable that is why you were easily found out now what if i give you two uh, three variables you need at least three equations right if there are three variables ax1 plus bx2 plus three uh, cx3 plus d then you would need four equations right now let us say you have five uh, variables what are these x and y these are variables right now i would tell there are five variables how do you find out you would need at least five equation and the long five values of x and y and then there will be long derivation right substituting one and two subtracting one and two and third equation and substituting the others slowly you would uh, just derive it right now in real life scenario the simple equation that we used to convert from degree centigrade to Fahrenheit similarly every activity is related in this world like for example uh, you are given to control the Godavari dam okay now you want to optimize the uh, uh, water flow from the dam. Now, this uh, every dam has a gate flow, right? Now, you have to find out what. So, to open the gate, no, there are five to six parameters pressure, temperature, then there is uh, liver, liver, liver one or liver two, liver three, gear one, gear two, gear three, acceleration. So, these are all five to six knobs. Think of it as a knobs in present in the control room. You have to optimize in such a way that uh the gate opens uh as soon as possible yeah or the gate stops as soon as possible everyone has watched puspa yeah puspa you have watched that yes sir yes sir uh, uh, so in puspa what happens this uh, person comes uh, with a bag of cash and he asks him to uh, close the gate earlier it was all uh, uh, hand driven they had to uh, uh, loosen the screw and uh, lower the dam now it is all uh, automated yeah mechatronics using mechanical and uh, electronics so now you have to, uh, so now imagine sandalwood is flowing from top to bottom now uh, puspa is calling you and telling now uh, that uh, you have to close the ga gates within five seconds i do not know right how it, how do you find out or it let, let us say he says as soon as the sandalwood drop you have to stop uh, you have to uh, close the gate so that i do not even lose one wood one sandal wood now what would you find out you do not know what acceleration you need to give you do not know which lever you uh, need to turn and all and you did not know as i mentioned five uh, variables there is an accelerator that you have to change yeah there is a lever that you have to change there is a gear value that you have to change you have five to six variables and you do not have uh, uh, you do not know which one to uh, which one to optimize and you have only one chance so what do you do you have let us say you have historical data uh, of let us say uh, two years whenever the gate was closed what was the value of acceleration what was the value of the what was the lever one or two or three what was the gear number one or two or three what was the electricity uh, what was the resistance uh, what was the uh, potential difference uh, applied all the values you have and you have the time taken by the uh, dam to close so you can create an equation from there right now what is the equation your equation at left side will be time t time taken by a uh, the dam to close and your inputs will be this liver liver uh, liver uh, value the gear value the acceleration value the potential difference all of these values and you can train the uh, uh, train a machine learning model in order to minimize the time value right the time should be minimum closer to 0 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 0 0.4 seconds as soon as the as soon as the gate closes, the sandalwood will be stopped. So that how will you find out? You do not have time. That is where ML modeling will help you, right? So now I just give you an interesting example of Puspa, but it in real life scenarios it happens everywhere. Uh, you want to optimize your sales, you want to reduce your costs, you want to optimize the operations time, uh, delay time, all of it in supply chain management, operations, industries, FMCG, wherever you think it will be useful, right? So let us just uh, 
solve this simple equation of uh, Fahrenheit and centigrade and take inspiration from there uh, to solve Puspa's problem. Yeah. So what will I do? I do not know this 1.8 and 32. Okay. I just know equation y equal to mx plus c. Forget this 1.8 and 32. Now I need to find out what is the m value and c value. So what will I do? And I have the values of uh, Fahrenheit and centigrade where I've taken it from, I've copied it from here. For 40 degrees Celsius, minus 40 degrees Celsius, what is the Fahrenheit? For minus 30 degrees Celsius, what is the Fahrenheit value, degree Fahrenheit? So y is my Fahrenheit value. X is my input, uh, centigrade value, degree centigrade value. So I just created a list for every corresponding degree centigrade, centigrade there is a corresponding degree Fahrenheit. I created a data frame, right? So how do I create a data frame? I zip the both the lists. So if every one of you is accustomed with the Python, so this is how you create a list, right? Within bar bracket and you zip it. So what happens? It creates a data frame. So in data frame, what happens? For every corresponding X, you have Y. X is your input, Y is your output. Now what is Y? Y is Fahrenheit. X is degree centigrade. In nowhere here, I have mentioned 1.8 or 32. I have to find out that, right? So what will I do? I'll train the model. How do I train? I have to create a feature set. Feature is what? Input. What will be input here? Minus 40, minus 30, minus 20. All of this will be input. What will be output? In the degree Fahrenheit. So I do some operations to create a NumPy array. What, what does NumPy array do? NumPy array creates a feature vector. Okay, when it was minus 40 degrees Celsius, this is the input. Uh, when the uh, it was uh, minus 14 degree Fahrenheit, this was the uh, degree centigrade. And what is your output? Output is a Fahrenheit, simple Fahrenheit uh, list. Now I train it using a linear regression uh, model. Okay, this is a machine learning model. I've imported using SKLN. You can uh, do that too. Simple call from SKLN, uh, import linear, uh, linear model, import linear regression. I fit the data, I train it, on these two uh, lists, the, the X is my input, Y is my output. This is a supervising learning model. Supervising learning model means wherein uh, you have uh, uh, outputs labeled. Do you know what is the output value? Unsupervised learning means there is no target uh, feature. There is just input. X only will be there, Y will not be there. So after I trained it, you see here, what did I get? So I asked my model to predict it. What to predict? Given this in uh, input uh, values, find out what are the output, and I uh, and I score them. So my model is able to predict 99% of the times correctly. Why why is it not able to predict 100%? Uh, uh, because the data is less. I've just taken uh, six to seven rows. If I take thousand, it will uh, predict easily, right? Now I now I get the, when when I train the model, I I get the coefficient values as I said, x coefficient and y intercept. From the model you see, reg.coff, this is the code. You can just look at the documentation of linear regression. It will give you the coefficient, intercept, and all. What are the methods to get them? So you see, it has predicted that the coefficient is 1.79. Now, is, isn't 1.79 too close to our value? 1.8, right? And then the y-intercept, it has predicted as 31.9. Extremely close to, to uh, 32, uh, 32 value, right? This is the coefficient that we are searching for, right? Nowhere did we mention it, but we were able to derive it using the data, right? So that is the, uh, so you can just write the equation y equal to mx1 plus m2x2 plus m3x3. You can input the data. After you get the coefficients, you will directly get the value. You can uh, substitute the value and you get the equation. That is how equations can be derived. That is how optimizations can be done, right? Let us see whether this model works. You, one might say, sir, this value, it was already there here. For 38 degree, it knew that 100 degree Fahrenheit is there. For 22 degree centigrade, 73 degree Fahrenheit is there. So what? So how do we know that it is not cheating? So let us take a value which we didn't give. There is no value of 100, no, in this X, 100 degree Celsius. What should be the value for 100 degree Celsius? 212 degree Fahrenheit. So how much did it predict? 211.7, which is nearby to our value. Right, 212, right? It has predicted 212. So there is no way that it could cheat. Otherwise, it will not. Simple, no, y equal to mx plus c. It has got m value, it has got c value. So it is directly deriving the y value. 
So if one would not know what are the coefficients, what are the equations, one would just have data. Think of astronomical data, space data. It could derive the person could directly derive values, directly derive equations. The person could understand the relationships between how things are correlated to each other. So that is how uh, you know machine learning will be uh, helpful in mathematical modeling. Now this is a very simple example that I gave you because I didn't want to confuse you. Now think of the same thing. You have multiple features. X is not single feature, multiple features. Like if you want to predict the house price. So you think of multiple things, number of bedroom, uh, land area, where is it, whether it is Amravati, Vaizaga, Hyderabad, where is it? Uh, what are the number of rooms inside it? All the features. And then your prediction of price. The machine learning model could do it uh, itself. You need not do it for uh, yourself, right? So that is the uh, beauty of uh, machine learning, and it can be used in mathematical modeling. If you have data, you have input, you know output, you can find out the equation. You need not compute it manually, right? So I think uh, that summarizes my uh, lecture today. Uh, I gave you a brief overview of how the uh, re interesting research uh, areas look like in computer vision, and I we also dive so. At one end, this is very high end. Dali 2 model is a very high end model. It has a billion parameters. Forget about writing the code even. So it, it requires a cluster of computers. It doesn't require one computer. It has it requires a let us say cluster of hundred computers to run together. Simple code. It cannot run on a single computer. It'll run, it requires supercomputers. So we discussed that level model and we this we discussed a simple granular uh, if, uh, relation between degree Celsius and degree Fahrenheit. How, how AI can be helpful uh, both the places from simple equations to complex problems, right? So that is the beauty of AI and advancements of AI, wherever it can be mm, useful. Uh, uh, having summarized my lecture, now I would open the desk for any questions. Yeah, okay, so that was a very interesting session. So please ask any queries if you have.